What's up everyone, it's Caddy with Money Vesting. Welcome on board for another Market Open live stream. Today is the day. Just give me a thumbs up if you guys can see me and hear me. We should be all set and good to go. We got the NASDAQ slightly down pre-market about seven basis points. We got the S&P 500 flat, about as flat as it can get. And we got the Dow Jones about down seven basis points as well. We have a lot to go over because Today is a very important day, of course. The Fed meeting is on deck at 2 p.m. Eastern, 2.30 p.m. Eastern as well is when Jerome Powell comes out with the press conference. And then we've also got the Bank of England uh, Central Bank meeting uh, tomorrow. And they also reported inflation. We've also got the retail sales numbers. We got some upgrades and downgrades on a lot of stocks. And volatility is just about flat. And the markets are just about flat as well. Looking for some direction ahead of that meeting. So thank you so much for joining everyone. I really, really appreciate all of you guys. Uh, and yesterday I shared some of the stats for 2021 as we wrap up the year uh, for from YouTube. That was an email that all the creators got. So again, thank you so much to all of you guys for being a part of our community. I, I really appreciate each and every one of you guys. And uh, I really, really expect 2022 to be even better and bigger than what 2021 was. So again, thank you so much and a huge shout out to all of our amazing subscribers as well so going over to the 2021 FOMC meeting so this is the calendar for 2021 and I've all already shared the link uh, in our discord so the, I've shared the link for this and I've shared the link for the live stream where you can actually watch it so both of those things will be available in the discord if you're part of our discord under the market updates channel you will find both links and I've also added this to our calendar update so 30 minutes before the event you will get a reminder from our calendar updates as well with the links so all the information is going to be on our discord if I'm not there to actually uh, you know kind of go over those things you have all the tools uh, that you need to actually look for the data and of course watch the videos and watch the press conference as well so December 14th and 15th is uh, today and yesterday and today is the two-day meeting that concludes and we've also got the summary of economic projections you will find PDFs and HTML files kind of listed over here as soon as the as soon as they're released at 2 p.m. to 30 p.m. Eastern so this is the FOMC announcement the statement with the summary of economic projections and 2.30 p.m., the, the press conference from Jerome Powell. And this is where you can actually watch it, the Federal Reserve's YouTube channel. Uh, and I've already gone over this, so I don't need to go over this again. But there are some things that we're looking forward to are going to change in the verbiage from the Federal Reserve because obviously they've mentioned that they're going to retire the word transitory and try to explain it uh, somewhat differently. And uh, they're also, you know, seeing the inflation run a little bit more persistently higher than their 2% average goal. So right now we're well over 6% for the CPI. PCE is also well over 5%. So that all of that is going to change and how the statement is released is going to be very important. This is the tapering measure. So I've already gone over that uh, as well. So, you know, this right here is going to be the, the visual representation of what tapering looks like. This was the original plan of tapering of $15 billion per month. The expectation was for us to conclude by May 2022. But an accelerated taper, if the Fed announces that today and kind of doubles down uh, from 15 to $30 billion uh, in unwinding that process down, uh, we will potentially end up uh, in March is when we're going to conclude. And that's going to leave some more room for rate hikes going into next year as well. So this, again, is going to be our timeline. Uh, the original tapering, the accelerated taper, if that's announced today, and then the rate hikes possibly going into next year, giving us about eight to nine months for potential rate hikes as well. This is the summary of economic projections. So this is how that's going to change from the Fed. And again, PCE inflation, this number will be adjusted higher in my view because earlier from June's projection, projection from 3.4, it went up to 4.2. The core also went up from 3% to 3.7. So I would not be surprised if this number is once again uh, adjusted higher for 2021 because we are sitting much higher for inflation. Unemployment rate is going to be adjusted down. GDP growth is, in my view, somewhat going to be similar to 5.96%. I think that's where we are for 2021. Uh, and then the federal funds rate, this is going to be the very important piece. Perhaps the two numbers that the market's going to be looking forward to is 2022 and 2023, where that federal funds rate is going to be uh, from the Fed, right? What the expectation is, what the forecast is from the uh, Fed for interest rates. Those are the two numbers to look forward to. And that's what the market's going to price in very, very quickly as soon as it comes out. 
And of course, our dot plot, which uh, goes over the Fed members' expectations and uh, where they see interest rates going. Right now for 2022, this is as of September's meeting. So the last time we got the SCP was back in September. This is as of September. Uh, was nine versus nine. So nine members uh, expected interest rates to stay low where they are in next year. And nine members expected at least one or more rate hikes. Uh, this number could tilt more towards rate hikes going into next year. Uh, and again, it's going to be very interesting for us to see how that changes uh, going into next year and then all the way uh, as high as 2023, 2024. And of course, longer term, we expect pretty much uh, all the members uh, to see rate hikes anywhere between two and three percent for the interest rates to sit around those levels. So that's that. Uh, then talking about the UK, inflation hits a 10 year high ahead of a key Bank of England meeting. So consumer price index also for England was released today. So it rose 5.1% in the last 12 months uh, to, through November, up from 4.2% in October, which was itself the steepest incline for a decade and more than double the central bank's target. Economists polled by Reuters expected reading of 4.7% for November and the Bank of England had projected inflation would hit 5% in the spring of 22 and were already there uh, about three to four months prior to when the Bank of England expected for us to get there. So on a monthly basis, UK inflation rose 70 basis points in November from October and core CPI, which excludes energy, food, alcohol, and tobacco prices. So the US core CPI excludes energy and food only, but in the UK, apparently it excludes alcohol and tobacco prices as well because they're really volatile. And that rose 4% year over year against Reuters forecast of 3.7%, increasing half a percent month over month as well. So definitely seeing bit of an increase in inflation in the UK as well. And the Bank of England's Monetary Policy Committee meets Thursday. So they actually meet tomorrow to decide whether to tighten monetary policy or not with inflation surging and the labor market remaining robust. But the rapid spread of the variant has cast fresh uncertainty over the economic recovery in the short term as well. So today we find out if there's going to be any type of, type of quantitative tightening in the US. And then tomorrow we find out if there's going to be any type of tightening in the UK. Uh, and the MPC defied market expectations in November by voting 7 to 2 to hold interest rates at their historic low. I showed you guys earlier in the US it was 9 versus 9, in the UK it was 7 versus 2. Uh, but analysts are split on whether it will pull the trigger on rate hikes on Thursday in light of the emergence of the new variant. Uh, and unfortunately for consumer prices, uh, peak inflation may still be a few months off. Today's CPI data only serves to increase the pressure on the Bank of England to raise interest rates as its MPC meeting tomorrow. Uh, and then moving forward, we got November retail sales uh, in the US, which were a little bit lower than the expectations. So retail sales just rose about 30 basis points from the prior month, only about a third of the expectations. Uh, and the slowing sales growth came against the backdrop of higher prices and reports of earlier holiday shopping. And the October increase was revised slightly higher to 1.8%. And the total retail sales from September through November were up 16 and a half or almost 16.2% compared to same period one year ago. So we're still higher from same time last year, but November numbers coming in a little bit shy of expectations as well. So we'll get over all the comments uh, from you guys. I'll just uh, you know run through this presentation, kind of do our morning routine, and then of course go over some individual stocks uh, as well, and then kind of go over some of your comments. So Biden expected to sign the debt ceiling increase out of the deadline. So remember, the debt ceiling was pushed back in the US to December. Uh, this was a looming risk. This was creating a lot of FUD in, in media as well. But I mentioned that even though there is going to be some volatility regarding this, I don't see this being a huge negative catalyst because time and time again, we know that the U.S. is going to come out with a resolution to either raise the debt ceiling or suspend it altogether because the one thing that we don't want to see is the U.S. default on its debt and not be able to pay its bills because that is going to be very catastrophic not just for the U.S., but for the world economy as well. And as a result, the House Democrats passed debt ceiling increase with one Republican vote, sending the measure to President Joe Biden early Wednesday. He's expected to sign it just hours before the Treasury Department forecast it would exhaust its tools to pay the government bills, an outcome that would upend the U.S. economy. So once signed, the resolution would raise the debt ceiling by $2.5 trillion and probably enough to get through next year's midterm election uh, as well. So that's that. CDC says Delta still dominant, but Omicron spreading quickly. Let's just go over to some of the upgrades and downgrades. So Morgan Stanley names Qualcomm as a top 2022 pick. Qualcomm getting a lot of upgrades recently right now. I think yesterday also it got another top stock pick for 2022 from another bank. You got Morgan Stanley reiterating Spotify as their overweight stock as well. Uh, I think Spotify got a couple upgrades today. Barclays downgrades Domino's to underweight from equal weight because of the reopening of the economy here. And we got Wells Fargo resumes Under Armour as overweight. Uh, overweight rating at a price target of $33 for the stock right now. Where is it trading? Let's take a quick look. So Under Armour UAA is trading at just about $22. $33 bucks is going to be roughly about 
a 48, 45% upside on the stock. So it's pretty substantial upside going into 2022. Goldman Sachs names Okta and Palo Alto as a top 2022 pick as well, based on accelerating demand for cybersecurity. Uh, then moving forward, we got UBS names UPS as a top 2022 pick. So we expect continued pricing gains to support margin expansion for the uh, shipping and logistics giant as well going into next year. Uh, then we got Barclays naming Starbucks as a top 2022 pick. Then we got Evercore ISI names Micron, Marvel, and NVIDIA as top 2022 pick, along with ASML, AMAT. Then we got Teradyne in semi-equipment, uh, as well as some of the other companies. JP Morgan names Spotify as a top pick, so Spotify getting a couple upgrades also, along with Qualcomm, and then Bank of America naming Amazon as a top pick in 2022 as well. So Amazon is one of the biggest positions that I have. So again, there is significant valuation upside. I do agree, uh, and, and you know we'll see we'll see how that kind of translates um, into actual execution and gains going into next year as well. All right, so just in time, we got about five minutes left for the markets to open. This was perfect timing. Um, you know, let me know what you guys think about the markets today. Uh, so far, we got the Nasdaq flat, we got the S and P flat, and we got the Dow Jones flat as well. So let's just jump over to some of the comments here uh, and what you guys have been saying so far. Let's see. And then, of course, we'll, we'll go over some of the individual companies as well, some of the stocks um, that you guys want me to go over. But but yeah, that was kind of like the whole, uh, you know, nutshell in a market, you know, what to watch, what's coming out, what's been out there uh, from the markets as well. So retail sales obviously came out a little bit lower than expected, uh, but there is going to be some tightening uh, measures taken uh, from both the UK and the US very soon, just given how high inflation is getting. And of course, the economy stays strong for these companies, uh, for these countries, actually, unemployment rates coming down uh, as well. So let me know what you guys think about the markets. Um, and uh, Sakati, could the market crash today? No, no. The market, I mean, crash, again, it really, we need to redefine what crash means. Seriously, guys, like we need to redefine what crash means. I, for one, have never used the word crash, I think, ever. Probably ever, not in my titles, never in my thumbnails, never actually I've even said it uh, because crash, I mean, it's a pretty, pretty serious thing. It's a pretty big thing in the markets and we really need to redefine the word crash. I think pullback correction um, needs to be used more. I think it's a very underappreciated words that don't get used often. And I think a lot of people kind of resort to the, using the word crash. Uh, but, you know, crash is anything I believe over 20% or more. I, I don't think that will be the case uh at least not on the day you know hopefully not uh but even even uh you know going into next year as we see another quantitative tightening cycle um i don't expect uh the markets to see a big crash out of this because it's these are all known factors as we discussed yesterday uh but a pullback or a correction that is still very much on the table uh you know it's still a possibility just given the entire market dynamics and as i mentioned in the short term as we go through, you know, first couple rate hikes, the market do see do seem to be very vulnerable to those uh, as valuations contract a little bit, as the liquidity kind of starts to uh, freeze up, uh, as rates start going higher for, for mortgages, for auto loans, for student loans, because everything's tied to the interest rates, right? So banks are borrowing money from somewhere to, to lend it out even further, right? So if banks start paying more on the money that they borrow, they're going to start charging more on the money that they lend to other consumers as well. So it's just going to be like a ripple effect of that so you know we could see that vulnerability in the markets in the, maybe in the next you know couple months couple of quarters uh, as we go through that tapering process and of course the rate hikes as well but you know a crash 15 20 percent you know i don't i don't personally see that happening uh, of course we can't completely rule that out the probability is still there there's still a 17 percent chance that happens right that's that's what the mats told us in the last 75 years 17 percent chance that we see a crash um but but in my view, the, the odds are very low. So so no, I don't I don't personally think that we're going to see a huge crash. But pullback correction um, is is uh, still on the table. Steve, so yeah, thank you, Katie, for mentioning this. You can get really alarmed reading crash everywhere. That is not a good mindset to be. Yes, and it can really kind of you know force you to uh, you know make decisions like you know you, you may want to stay out of the markets or sell and and things like that if you if you think the markets gonna are gonna crash. And I've all, always mentioned just because you speculate something, that is not the reason to stay out of the markets. In my view, it, there's it's always important, it's always wise, in my strong opinion, to stay invested. Uh, and you can always play around with your cash exposure. I think it's 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 more comfortable for us to have some buying power on the sidelines, have some cash on the sidelines to take advantage of that instead of just 
sitting out completely 100% cash when inflation is six, six and a half, seven percent, literally eating away your purchasing power and uh, the markets, you know, continue to kind of rally higher as they have done years and years in the past. So I think that's kind of like my two cents. Uh, let's take a look at Tesla. And, and again, let's just open up our uh, four charts. Um, I think Elon Musk has been on a selling spree recently, and that's been one of the reasons why stock's been under a lot of pressure, uh, without a doubt. And uh, I think he's up to 15 or 14 or 15 million shares. I think is what he sold so far. Uh, but as I've said, you know, if there is going to be selling pressure from him, if he's going to be the one selling, uh, regardless of how many people actually end up buying the stock, there is going to be pressure and we are still going to see some red days. But once he's through with all the selling, uh, then I think it's going to start to stabilize a little bit. And there are some support levels to watch. Uh, you know, $900, there, that's still a very strong support. Previous resistance for Tesla, possibly the next support level as well. Um, and we do have a very small gap to fill for the markets uh, also. All right, so the markets are open. Uh, I think a lot of people also talked about how there is gonna be uh, possibly a red day, I think some people mentioned, uh, based on the FOMC meeting. But, but yes, let's take a look at Facebook and Neo and some of the other companies as well. Um, so the NASDAQ is gonna be here, S&P 500 here, and of course the Dow Jones all the way to the left. You guys know the drill. Uh, and then we got Apple top right. We got Tesla over here down about 1% right now. By the way, I did start a new position on one of the stocks today. Brand new stock, have never owned it. Actually, have owned it in the past, but then sold it. Uh, and now I'm, I'm starting a position in that company once again. Bought it pre-market, sent out the alert to all of our members. Uh, and I'm very, very excited to kind of build out a bigger position. That is a stock that I do see myself kind of allocating 6 to 8% in the future and kind of build out a very, very big position uh, eventually. Um, and we'll keep a close eye on that stock as well. So I will do a video. I'll do like an update analysis on that stock very soon. Uh, all right. So let's take a look at Square. So PayPal, uh, how's your PayPal bag? Pretty heavy. Not that heavy, though. It's it's OK. Uh, yeah, because I think PayPal is still like under 2% uh, of what, I, what I've actually invested. So, uh, you know, 186, we're just trading at those levels. 180 is that next support all the way down to 170. So definitely, uh, you know, it's been selling off quite a bit from all-time highs of $310. I think PayPal, Square, uh, Shopify, you know, there's been a lot of companies, higher valuation companies, even Visa is kind of part of the same club that's been selling off quite a bit. Uh, so 180 all the way down to 170 are two support levels that I'm really watching for PayPal. And again, it starts to feel like it's stabilizing a little bit, right? So if you go over to the weekly chart, you'll notice that after weeks and weeks of selling, uh, it seems to be exhausted now, right? Selling pressure seems to get exhausted. The RSI is very oversold and so is the MACD. Uh, and right now we're just kind of validated that support at close to $180. Uh, and I, in my view, again, like I said, the valuations come down quite a bit. The company is still growing. PayPal's a very quality company. I uh, wouldn't be surprised if it kind of retraces back up to 200, 225, $250 per share. So those right there are going to be some of the targets to watch um, for, for PayPal. So Square, take your symbol SQ, uh, selling off even further down to 167. Wow. So uh, let's take a quick scan on the markets. Let's just go over to our main watch list and we'll take a quick scan. Uh, seems like the Nasdaq and the Dow and the S&P are all pulling back slightly. Not a, not a whole lot. So only 25 basis points on the Nasdaq. S&P and Dow still pretty much flat. But let's take a look at some of the stocks here. So Roblox, wow, down over 9%. We got Roku down over 5.5%. Uh, we got Mara down over 3%. Uh, Neo's pulling back another 2%. Unfortunately, Baidu is also down over 2.5%. Uh, then we got Snapchat, Hood, AMC, DraftKings. DraftKings has just been on complete tear like to the downside I mean, this stock has just been blown apart right now uh it's just too much selling pressure week over week for the company uh, then we got twitter square like we are going over right now then we got peloton pulling back we got southwest coinbase Cor corsair so everything seems to be red amd palantir arc g nvidia shopify amazon paypal visa netflix caterpillar uh so yeah a lot of lot of stocks here in the red what is actually green right now not a whole lot not a whole lot. So we got Qualcomm slightly green, Trade Desk, Udemy is pushing higher, although that stock's just been completely sold off um, so much. Uh, and then we got Lemonade, Lodge Deck, Teradyne. Not 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 like there's there's no stock that's actually moving up very much. Apple is just flat. Tesla's down about one percent. PayPal's pulling back. How's Nvidia? 
down about 1% here also. Uh, Vertex is also down about half a percent here. So, uh, <laughs> all right, let's take a look at Walmart. So Square, by the way, we were going over Square. So 150 is going to be that next support level for Square right here. Uh, still, the valuation is a little bit on the high end. Um, so, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if we do see some more contraction for Square. So definitely it's come down from highs of $290 uh, and, and a 42% drop, right? So pretty, pretty significant drop. Uh, very small position. I'll continue to kind of uh, see if I if I want to get in more uh, closer to 150 as the valuation continues to contract here. But yeah, but yeah that's a pretty big drop for the company. Walmart, uh, very, very range bound. I, I want to go over the weekly charts. I think weekly is kind of better, kind of zooming out a little bit. Uh, and you'll notice that support level has been at 134 uh, right here at close to that level. So we've got a perfect validation in previous support, 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 support. So four times quadruple bottom for the company and then a triple triple top for, for Walmart at close to 152, right? So there's been a lot of resistance here for Walmart at 152. So it's a very range bound pattern. Uh, this has been a very nice week up over 3% and the next target I would watch is 152 for Walmart as well. So that would be the level to watch for the company. Um, all right, so let's see. Uh, all right, so okay, so I didn't even read that. So the stock that we're talking about here is actually Microsoft. So that's the stock that I actually bought today. So uh, along with that, of course, I picked up more more of other stocks. Uh, but yes, uh, those are the stocks that we're talking about. Uh, I didn't even read those. Uh, okay, so let's take a look at yes. So block. All right, block. If you want to be really really technical about Square uh, Block Inc. Um, all right, so let's take a look at Etsy as well. Etsy and Enphase are two stocks that I'm kind of like on the fence about whether I should like lock in some of the profits here or not, because definitely they do trade at higher valuations. Etsy, marginally speaking, doesn't have a lot of upside left because I did a complete fundamental analysis on the company. Uh, I believe when it was in the 150s or 160s, my price target was, I think, over $345, $350. Don't quote me. I have to rewatch my video, but I think it was like north of $320 per share. And it actually got up to three hundred and seven dollars, uh, with a very very strong move, like almost eighty nine ninety percent. And right now we're seeing a big drop. So a couple of weeks ago it was down over twenty percent, um, and we're definitely seeing a, a big drop down to two hundred and twenty five dollars per share. So valuation is coming down a little bit. Same with N phase. N phase has been selling off as well recently, um, but for Etsy now from these levels, I think there is marginal upside. Um, but from before, I think there wasn't much. Uh, to look forward to. I think that's why the stock is pulling back a little bit. And those targets were further out, right? So we're not like 12 month targets, but it's it's more like, look at Tesla. Literally just went from like being negative 1% to now almost up 1% with a huge candle coming in on the five minutes and a lot of volume as well. Look at Nvidia up almost 2%. Uh, let's take a look at Amazon. So Amazon still down about half a percent. Google and Microsoft were selling off quite a bit. Uh, yesterday, so Google is still down about one percent, and Microsoft is flat so far, and Apple just about flat as well. So look at the Dow Jones, absolutely getting wrecked here right now, down about a hundred points very quickly because this was the index that was actually green, and the Nasdaq was red, and now we have the Nasdaq flat, and the Dow Jones really selling off. So uh, interesting, with the volatility also higher, two percent, and S and P is just about flat. Interesting dynamics. Uh, on the market. So yes, Nvidia, very strong move to the upside. So up almost 2%. Very, very strong move. Uh, so Nvidia's up. Create Desk, upstart pushing higher from 146. Tesla, AMD, they're both up closer to half to 1%. Uh, Apple, so there's more and more stocks turning green. Uh, but then also there are stocks that are red um, quite a bit, like Square's down over 2%. Roblox, absolutely getting killed. Did Roblox report earnings? I don't think they did, right? They don't, they, I think they reported earnings before. What is the big reason why it's selling off so much? Let's see if you can find any headlines here. So Roblox report 35% rise in November daily active users. So, so let's see. Uh, Roblox Wednesday said that its daily active users rose 35% year over year to 49.4 million in November with hours engaged 32% to 3.6 billion. The video game developer said revenue is estimated to be between 184 and $187 million, an increase uh, of 84 87% from a year earlier. Estimated average bookings per day active users were between $4.21 to $4.27, uh, and estimated bookings were $208 to $211 million. 
Interesting. So they're not like official earnings as far as I know, but I think they're just like estimated earnings, right? So said revenues will be 184 to $187 million. So I believe that is for the full fiscal year. And the company trades at about 56 billion. That cannot be for the full fiscal year. That has to be for the quarter. 39 times earnings. That's actually a pretty high number for the company, right? So, but yeah, that's a big drop for the company. I mean, price of sales is really high. 30 to 39 times sales is, is already a very rich valuation for Roblox. Uh, and, and as we know in this market, higher valuation stocks um, will possibly get hurt, uh, unfortunately, right now. Um, so 90, 90 is going to be that next support level to watch for Roblox. Alibaba down under 4.6%. I actually read a headline today from like a global strategist that essentially says that uh, it's game over for Chinese stocks. That was the headline of the article. Um, and they basically mentioned that, you know, there's been like a 20 plus year fight between the U.S. and China, according uh, with the accordance with the accounting rules and the transparency and all that stuff. Uh, and of course, the, the sector in itself, the country in itself has become very, uh, very uninvestable. And, uh, you know, people are obviously getting hurt with Chinese companies and Alibaba is no different. Sold off from $318 all the way down to 120 but very, very interesting headlines uh, in my view. So Mara selling off here down under $35, down about 4.6%. Uh, anything under 30, so I've mentioned this before, 27 to $30 are going to be some support levels to watch. Those are the levels that I'm very closely watching to actually buy more shares for Marathon Digital. Actually, we haven't taken a look at Bitcoins. Let's see, Bitcoin's down about 2% here. Uh, Ethereum is also down about 2%, so just under 3,800, so both of them are coming down. Support level for Ethereum at 37, 3,700 roughly, and Bitcoin, the support level is going to be at closer to this green rectangle, uh, at close to 43,000, 42,900 levels, roughly at those prices. Volatility is still up over 3.7%, so we are seeing some minor spike in the VIX. Uh, the S&P is slightly down, Dow Jones really, really pulling back here. The NASDAQ also slightly down. Uh, just about flat. Let's take a look at XBI and we'll watch uh, LABU as well. Uh, Boeing, I read an article on Boeing today. What was it? I forgot. I think they, they mentioned that their earnings or something, their aircraft deliveries will double in 2022. I think that was the that was the uh, article that I read today on Boeing. We'll take a look at it in just a minute. But uh, biotech sector, flat. Uh, so somebody wants me to go over to LABU. But XBI, uh, $100 is going to be that next support level that we're watching. So previous support, resistance for uh, this biotech ETF as well. I haven't really pulled the trigger on LABU yet uh, because, like I said, biotech is still under a lot of pressure in 2021. But going into next year, uh, I would expect some type of a reversal in this sector because no two consecutive years have been negative for biotech in the last uh, 16 plus years. So I think that, that was a very, very interesting sort of metric to know. Uh, and just given how much it's sold off, how much the valuations have come down, um, I fully do expect for a reversal in biotech going into next year. So LABU 27, 30, $27 is going to be that level to watch. Boeing uh, down about 1.7%. So definitely selling off. Uh, $206 is actually going to be a resistance right now. So previous support level acting as a resistance for the stock. So we're going to turn over to this uh, right here. So previous support level possibly acting as a resistance right now for, for Boeing at $206, $210. Uh, and the support levels right now are going to be sitting roughly in the 190s, 190 to 192 levels. Uh, but definitely uh, seeing a lot of pressure to the downside, uh, even after that headlines. So let's see if we can find it here. Um, so Boeing receives 109 orders, delivered 34 jets in November. So that's good. This actually came out today. But there was another article. If I find it, I'll share it in our Discord later today. Uh, let's take a look at Adobe. So Adobe actually reports after the markets close today. Uh, I think earnings, they do. Um, so JP Morgan downgrade on the stock with a price target of $680. Where is it right now? $620. So all-time high, $699. So there's not a lot of upside, uh, unfortunately, for Adobe stock. It does trade at a high valuation, so I don't blame uh, them for downgrading the stock. We went over this yesterday. So I think... Uh, uh, the downgrade is more than justified, just given how val how overvalued the company is from just price to sales, price to earnings metrics. But again, it's a very sticky business. It's a, it's a great margin business. Uh, it's been around for a while. So long term, I don't I don't expect Adobe to 
you know, not be able to perform up to their standards. So earnings, keep a close eye on those. Right now, you know, just moderate support somewhere in the 600s right there uh, and resistance all the way as high as all time highs at $699, $700. Uh, let's see. Um, so Apple at these valuations, Apple is actually not that bad uh, in terms of valuations. It is actually very fair uh, in terms of where it trades. So, you know, 30 times earnings in a market as a whole, like the general S&P 500 tends to trade somewhere in like the 25 to 26 times earnings. Apple trading at 31 makes sense. It's outperformed the markets this year. The products, the growth has been very strong. Price to sales at eight. You know, you can make an argument that's a little bit high, but I think it's okay. Price to cash flow at 28, enterprise value EBITDA at 24. So I think it's 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 a very fair valuation. For most of the FANG stocks, I think Facebook, Apple, um, Google, and even Amazon, to some extent, they all trade at fair valuations, uh, or fair to inexpensive valuations that are not like super overvalued. There, there's no there's no one stock that I could pinpoint and tell you guys that it's, it's a FANG stock and it's overvalued right now because all of them actually trade at reasonable valuations. But from a technical standpoint, sure, they can pull back uh, just given how the RSI is, you know, trading at almost at your over, overbought levels here, MACD's also. So 155 is gonna be that next support level uh, to watch for Apple. So, all right, now now it's a party. We got the S&P down over 22. We got the NASDAQ down over 37 basis points with the Dow Jones down over 143 points. So now we're fully starting to see that direction come in from the markets. Um, you know, I really, I really want a direction. It's more like I don't want markets to be just sideways and just like a kind of go back and forth with choppy trading. I just want either like down downtrend or an uptrend. Just just give us some direction that's more guidance um, from the markets and for us. Uh, but if it just keeps moving sideways, that's a very very uh, difficult uh, price action to actually understand and which way it's going to break out to. But but right now we're seeing a good downtrend um, for for the markets right now. So, all right. Uh, so Adobe, yes, I think I got it in the in the 300s. Actually, let's see. Yeah, so I think I got it in the 300s for Adobe. Uh, Michael, yes. Um, let's see. C3 AI, uh, you know, somebody mentioned that they actually recently won a big contract, I think like a $500 million contract uh, that, they w that they won. But there we go. So secures a $500 million deal with the U.S. Department of Defense. Stock surges after hours. So um, signed a new five-year production other transaction agreement with the U.S. Department of Defense among uh, accounting to $500 million. So that's a big win for, for C3AI, absolutely. Uh, because you'll notice that their revenues have been growing, but they're in the, in the range of $100, $250 million. So this big $500 million um, is a big win for the company. But I also don't want the company to be too dependent on just one or two contracts. I want them to be well diversified. Uh, and of course, the valuation has come down substantially. Now, even after the sell-off of 70 plus percent, it's trading at 16 times sales, which is for a software company, you know, reasonable. But earlier, you can make an argument that it was significantly overvalued. And now $27.50, $20 is going to be that support. Resistance are roughly $43, $44 per share right now. So it's just a lot of a lot of back and forth. Uh, but there is just a lack of fundamentals right now from the company. I need to see better revenue growth. I need to see better free cash flows, EBITDA, better balance sheet, better management, uh, better execution. All those things need to line up for us to for us to you know look into this company from a longer term lens uh, and, and start buying it and building a position. But for now, it's just a stock, another stock in the market that is just trying to find itself uh, and, and just a company that's trying to grow its revenues uh, and do better. So on the watch list. Not not taking a position anytime soon, but definitely on the watch list as as the company kind of irons out some of those financials, then we'll definitely take a closer look uh, at this company in the future. Um, so let's see, Palantir is doing flat, nothing really, just down about 40 basis points. I do think for Palantir as well, uh, the amount of selling pressure that we've seen along with PayPal, uh, Palantir is also exhausted most of that selling pressure because one, two, three, four, five, uh, almost seven weeks of consistent selling here for Palantir, right? The RSI has been selling off the MACD, and this is the weekly chart. So I do think that we're now starting to find some reasonable support uh, for Palantir as well. So next resistance in the $20 range, support level at $17.30, uh, $17 range for the company. So uh, wouldn't be surprised for us to see some strong up upside here from Palantir moving forward. Volatility is higher. Uh, look, at, look at that. So we're up over 4.5% on uh, the VIX here. And uh, 
25 is going to be that next level and we got the nasdaq pulling down or half a percent we got the s p down about 25 and we got the dow jones down about 33 business that accelerated really quickly right so for those of you who've been watching the live stream here since market open um you'll notice the the back and forth between growth and value right now because nasdaq at one point was uh was down more than the dow so dow was green and then that flipped and then now that flipped again uh where we have the nasdaq down more than the dow jones and the s p 500 obviously getting pulled down with the nasdaq because of big tech but here we go entire watch list is mostly red uh with a few few companies still holding up like tesla just slightly up there with nvidia just about flat uh and then we got Novavax up almost 3%, but for the most part, there is uh, some serious downdraft here on the NASDAQ. Um, let's see. Thoughts on sales, Salesforce versus Adobe Growth versus EPS. So I think they're both very solid companies in the software space, uh, but I think they both traded uh, at rich valuation, I think I did a video on Salesforce recently. I forgot what the valuation is. So 146 times earnings, 10 and a half times sales, 38 times cash flow, and just over 47 times enterprise to value to EBITDA. So it is high, no doubt. Um, so support levels at 235, all the way around to 210 uh, for for Salesforce, and it's a very strong a cloud software stock. But it depends how much you're willing to pay for that for that growth, right? For me, I think 235. Is, is an okayish price, 210 is even better. Uh, anything under 200 is gonna be fantastic for the company. But right now there's just valuations a little bit high in my view. Um, Apple now under 174, Nvidia under 284, Microsoft also flat, and we got Tesla barely green today. Let's take a look at the Dow 30 stocks, what's actually holding us up. Pfizer, Pfizer is the one that's actually holding us up. Actually not even Pfizer, I think it would, I would say it's like UNH because it's a price weighted index. So I think the higher the price here, the price here of the stocks are, the more influence they have on the Dow Jones uh, versus the market cap because S&P 500 and NASDAQ, the bigger the market cap, the bigger the influence. The Dow Jones, the bigger the price, the more the influence they have. So American Express definitely pulling down on the Dow along with Chevron and Exxon Mobil because oil prices are seeing some type of a pullback here. So crude brand, they're both down about 80 basis points each. Um, uh, thoughts on Mara, and then we'll go over to Neo and see how that stock is doing. So Mara down about 3.8%. Uh, not a big deal. Again, this is the support. 27 to $30 is the level that we're watching on Mara moving forward. I would love to get uh, anything under 30 because it's a very correlated stock with Bitcoin. Bitcoin's down over 2%, so it's not a surprise that Marathon is down over 3.5%. It's it's very correlated. Uh, Riot is down 46 Clean Spark, what is the ticker symbol? Is down over nine percent right now. Wow, Clean Spark. Actually, they reported earnings, didn't they? They reported earnings yesterday. Let's see what they what they reported. So Clean Spark reported late Tuesday, fiscal 2021 adjusted EPS 31 cents, compared with a net loss of a dollar seven cents. So that's good. They're swinging to a profit. And Bitcoin mining energy technology company reported revenue of 49.4 million uh, this year, up from 10 million same time last year. So that's 20, 30, 40. That's like a 400, uh, 4x or like a 300 percent increase on the revenue year of year and swinging to a profit and the stock is down over eight percent makes sense right report great earnings and the stock gets punished that's that's the market completely makes sense uh but this right here is gonna be that adjusted support right here close to 10 11 dollars a share we're coming down to that level so you know august 23rd we validated september 27th we validated a couple of times before pushing higher and this could also be as a result of bitcoin coming down so you know bitcoin's down about two percent so it makes sense why clean spark is down BITO, another pro shares B, uh, Bitcoin ETF down about 1.2%. And Grayscale Bitcoin Trust is down about 1.7%. So some of the Bitcoin mining companies and Bitcoin stocks in general are down. Not a surprise. Uh, NEO is down another 4% right now, unfortunately, coming down to just under $31. Uh, and again, this is just fears, I feel like, around Chinese stocks if you come over to our watch list. Let's see. Oof. I mean, just take a look at this. This is your answer to why why Lee Auto, why Xpeng, why Alibaba, why Neo, they're all down right here. This is the watch list. Nothing to explain here. It's just for us to look. No talking right here for the Chinese watch list. 
So Alibaba is down almost 5%, JD down over almost 6%, NEO is down almost 4%, Baidu is down almost 4%, DD down over 3.3%. Who is trading DD? Who is putting in the bids right now? I have no idea. The stock's getting delisted from the New York Stock Exchange. Why are there bids on this stock? <laughs> the Chinese watch list is depressing, man. I agree. It is. It is pretty depressing. Xpeng, I think uh, Kathy would bought some more Xpeng recently. I think I saw that um, in one of the articles yesterday. Uh, let's see. I think that she bought like closer to another, I want to say 100 million. Might be, might be a little bit too high, but don't quote me on that. I think it was roughly around those levels that she bought more. X Bank stock. Um, but uh, but anyway, so Tesla dipping down to red here, Apple coming down as well. I think the Finvis chart might have opened now. So let's take a look at how that's doing. So actually, well, this is also delayed, I think. It is also delayed, yeah. Because the picture looks much, much worse than what it's being shown here. I think it's like five or 10 minutes delayed. Um, so yeah, we'll kind of keep up with this. But Facebook, we haven't gone over Facebook yet. Or meta platforms. Slightly down 1.8%. Uh, pulling back a little bit. So that 50 EMA is right at that uh, $335, $336. Lee Auto's forward P on Finvis is 15,500. Really? Is it 15,000? No way. <laughs> is it really that much? Um, okay, so yeah. So Ali Reza says, yes, in ARKQ. I think she bought more XPeng. Uh, yes, XPeng more yesterday. I think 9, 97,697 shares. Yes, yeah, good to know that. Um, and that's the thing. You know, if she's buying and she's buying on the New York Stock Exchange, is she concerned about the delisting? You know, that's the kind of lens that I see. I mean, of course, uh, Neo, Xpeng, Liado, they're in the same market. They're competing against the same customer base. And, you know, you know, arguably they're kind of catering to the different audiences. But if she's buying Xpeng, Charlie Munger's out buying Alibaba, Ray Dalio's bullish on China. I mean, where do you see this, this sector going then in the next three to four years? Do you really see delisting happening? Uh, or is it mostly just a lot of fear around this market? That's, the, that's where you actually... Uh, you know, make a lot of gains or you actually, you know, get destroyed with, with Chinese stocks. It's like one or the other. There's no middle ground, I feel like, in China. With China, I feel like there's no middle ground. There's either, you know, in Wall Street bets, they say like it's either um, Lambos or food stamps. That's what it is with, with Chinese stocks right now. It's that. If you make a big bet on China, it, it'll either be one of those things. <laughs> with these companies. Um, let's see. Uh, would you buy Xilinx to get AMD shares at a discount? I think AMD, uh, I think I'm more than happy to just hold AMD. I would love to get more NVIDIA. I haven't really taken a look at Xilinx yet. Uh, I think that's probably one of the stocks that I should really look into. Uh, both, I think TSMC and Xilinx, I think they're both very, very good prospects. Um, <laughs> Dave says Lambos, hopefully. Um, who is the guy that said <laughs> it's Lambos or food stamps? I actually read that on Wall Street Bets, I think once. Uh, it was like people obviously taking these bets, uh, pretty significant bets on uh, very, very volatile stocks. That's that's kind of like the mentality. It's like either Lambos or food stamps, like nothing in the middle, nothing in between um, for them. So it was very, very interesting and of course funny at the same time. But uh, what I was saying was uh, NVIDIA, I would love to own NVIDIA, but at a better pricing and AMD, I would look to add more. Uh, if it comes down to 110 or $100 at a better valuation, we'd love to get more uh, AMD as well. And then, of course, doing some analysis on TSMC and Xilinx in the future. I think that would be um, very, very interesting stocks. So, you know, in my view, um, I won't be able to live stream the Fed meeting, but I just want to get my thoughts out. So I do think that the uh, accelerated tapering uh, is priced in for the markets to some extent. Going from 15 to 30 billion dollars, I think that's priced in. I think Fed's uh, increase of their projections uh, of the economic recovery for inflation, interest rates, um, and the unemployment rates coming down and GDP growth kind of staying flat is also priced in to some extent. We will see some big jumps from the Fed's uh, economic projections. So be ready to see that PCE core and PCE to go up for Fed's 2021 expectations, 2022 and forward. Um, and then going into next year, I wouldn't be surprised if two rate hikes um, are expected from the Fed and they are also priced in 
um, for from the markets. But anything that kind of wavers away from those expectations, if you see from 30 billion, let's say to 45 or even higher in terms of tapering, that is going to move the market in my view. If we see more rate hikes, possibly three or more, that is going to move the markets in my view. Uh, but if also on the flip side, if there's one rate hike priced in or from the Fed, that's the expectation, that's going to move the markets. And if we don't see any type of accelerated taper, that's also going to move the markets. But for the most part, I think 30 billion accelerated tapering and two rate hikes, that's what's priced in at the moment, in my view. Um, let's see. So Dragon Blue says she bought NEO. I don't think she bought NEO. I think she bought XPeng is what I saw. So move the markets, meaning that uh, that's that's going to be new information for the markets uh, for us to essentially price that in very quickly, meaning that that's what's going to create a lot of volatility. But if, if we are already expecting some accelerated taper, tapering from the Fed and some interest rate hikes, possibly two next year, that is already information that we know. It's just a formality for the Fed to announce it, right? Because investors have been expecting that. But if there's anything that's different from what investors are expecting, that's going to be new information. Um, that will create some volatility for the markets. But again, it's going to be very interesting, whatever the uh, briefing is going to be. I do think that these are uh, the questions and uh, the the post-press conference questions from the media, I think a little bit are funnier than the banking committee. I think the banking committee one that we saw a couple of weeks ago, that was a two-day meeting for Janet Yellen and Jerome Powell, that was more intense than what the news media asks because I do think there's a lot of repetitive questions there's very like, you know, somewhat simple questions as well, things that Jerome Powell's already addressed in the past. Uh, but the banking committee one, I think that's more intense. That's, you know, just putting them on sort of like on focus there and they have to answer some questions that are, you know, somewhat very difficult. And they're just calling them out, uh, you know, during those meetings. Uh, but for this, I do think, you know, Jerome Powell's have, 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 have it easy, very easy to answer. Um, So we don't know which direction and for the market will move. Well, we do. If, if 30 billion is accelerated to 45, 50 billion and interest rates are you know, possibly for two or more or three or more, then that's going to be bearish for the markets. So we're going to see a negative, um, that act as a negative catalyst and potentially to the downside. And if there's anything to the flip side, if the Fed says, no, we're not going to taper, uh, we're not going to accelerate our taper, we're going to stay at this pace. Um, and you know, interest rates are going to stay low. We're going to keep them at these accommodative levels, and possibly next year we're only going to raise interest rates by one one time. That is going to be bullish for the markets. That that possibly will act as a positive catalyst, in my view, to push the markets higher. Um, so yes, anything either of those things could act as both as a bullish or a bearish catalyst for the markets right now. Uh, let's take a look at SoFi as well. So SoFi, 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 down about one point nine, almost two percent. Uh, supports at 1363, 1350 levels. So this right here is a level to watch right now. Uh, previous support level, a couple of times we've validated for the company. This also on the weekly chart, uh, you'll notice has just been so much back and forth. I feel like SoFi and Tattooed Chef are two stocks that have just traded sideways. It's just been so much back and forth. Although Tattooed Chef, uh, you know, has been making some lower highs. So it hasn't really been testing its previous resistance levels. But for SoFi, it's just been picture perfect. It's just come up to $24, $25. That's been a resistance. It's come down to $14. That's been a support. And then we've seen, seen a rally and back and forth. Just a lot of uh, a lot of back and forth for SoFi. But support level is going to be at $13.60, $13.50 levels. Walgreens, uh, just down about 80 basis points. Walgreens also has just been very, very much in a range-bound pattern, consolidating sideways. So not really doing much. So, all right, let's take a look at the markets here. So we're seeing some stabilization, some buyers kind of stepping in. NASDAQ still down about half a percent. s and is down about 20. The Dow is down about 30. From all-time highs, we are currently down over 6.6% for the NASDAQ. For S&P, we are down slightly over 2.5%. And for the Dow, we're down over 3% as well. Um, LUV, yes, love is not getting any love right now, uh, unfortunately. It's just been selling off this stock. So watching some support levels down in $35 to $30 ranges, I think I mapped out some new support levels here for the company. 
Um, valuation wise, you know, without a doubt, the stock remains uh, significantly underpriced right now. I think only 11 times forward earnings. Um, and of course, underperforming with the with the original pandemic and then the Delta and the, and the new variant. So it's just been struggling to find proper ground. Um, one thing I will mention is that uh, it's not just Southwest. It's a lot of like pretty much all airlines, right? So Americans down about 37% from recent highs. United Airlines is down over 36% from its recent highs. And then Delta is also down um, pulling back about 31% from its recent highs. So uh, it is a lot of airlines. It is not just South, uh, Southwest that's not getting any love. And then Alaska Airlines is also down about 33%. So just about 30-35% is what we're down from uh, from recent highs for, for these airlines. So would you invest in PayPal? or block right now i'm not sure so in terms of growth it really depends what you're looking for growth of course block is going at a much fi much faster pace their growth rate is much stronger than that of paypal but paypal's valuation is much better than that of squares so in terms of stocks potential downside uh, square could possibly have more downside than paypal in my view but square is also fundamentally on an underlying business standpoint it's growing at a much faster pace revenues and earnings are relative to PayPal. PayPal is more stable, um, you know, compared to compared to uh, Square's revenue and stuff. Square is now at 76 billion market cap. Wow, definitely breaking down under 100 billion uh, in market cap. I think PayPal is just over 200 billion. So, you know, what I would compare these two companies is I don't think Intel and AMD would be like a fair comparison of PayPal and Square uh, because Intel, I feel like there's some significant changes happening at, the, at Intel right now. Uh, the company is actually losing market share they're they're not growing revenues um at the same rate as they used to so i think paypal amd uh, paypal and square not quite that best comparison uh but i would say paypal is more mature than than square square is still like a high growth company paypal is more of a mature growth company right now um so what do you think about neo's day we already know that they're going to be announcing um you know new models and possibly uh, i think they, they have a special guest as well um so all that is, again, it's going to be very uh, full of suspense uh, from NEO. Um, should be very interesting. You know, they already hit their battery swap station goal. Margins are improving. Newer models are going to possibly improve deliveries going into next year. Capacity is still on their way to increasing substantially uh, over the coming quarters. So, you know, expecting all the good things from, from NEO. Uh, all right, so let's see. Fiverr. So Fiverr and Upwork, uh, Fiverr selling off down about 2.6% here, unfortunately, selling off even further. So Fiverr is also a very, very high growth stock. Uh, luckily, fortunately, we did exit uh, Fiverr um, with just about a 3% profit. Earlier, we did um, you know, lock in some gains, but then the rest of the position was sold earlier um, because of the valuation here. And Upwork, I think, is kind of in that same, same territory where there's significant valuation contraction here. For the company right down about 40 50 percent for the stock so watching that support at close to 31 dollars that's the next support for upwork uh moving forward so vix up over four percent we're seeing some stabilization here for the markets with tesla slightly down apple down over 60 basis points microsoft up over half a percent that's good nvidia also up over 66 basis points and uh amd slightly up as well so i'm gonna leave you guys with that um Again, the FOMC meeting is going to be later today, so make sure that you put that on your calendar. That is very, very important. Um, but again, thank you so much for being here. I really, really do appreciate you guys. Always do. Uh, make sure that you drop a like and subscribe if you're new to the channel. Uh, and make sure that you do check out the uh, Patreon link down in the description below. We'll be covering a lot of different stocks and a lot of other companies as well. And then also go over um, uh, the macroeconomic stuff re related to monetary and fiscal policy as well. So thank you so much for being here. Really appreciate you guys. Um, hope you guys have a great green day, even though the markets are down. But still, I hope that you have a great green day. Uh, and as always, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out. I'm always available. I'll talk to you guys later. Take care.